Hi, it's Katrina. From its missing nose to a network of secret tunnels, here are 10 of the biggest mysteries of the Great Sphinx in Giza. As you can probably tell from my voice, I'm a bit sick, but I still wanted to make this video for you guys. Thanks for your patience, and I hope you like it anyway. Number 10. Who built it? For being one of the oldest monuments in the world, the Sphinx is still full of riddles. With such uncertainty about its age and purpose, there is a great deal of debate about who exactly was responsible for the original construction of the Great Sphinx. For thousands of years, much of the Sphinx lay buried underneath the sand, with just the head sticking out. Egyptologists have been frustrated trying to figure out who built it. One of the most popular theories is that it was on behalf of the pharaoh Khafre, who reigned during the fourth dynasty of the Old Kingdom about 4,500 years ago. Ancient hieroglyphic texts have told us that his father Khufu built the 481-foot-tall Great Pyramid. Khafre built his own pyramid near his father's, although he made it 10 feet shorter, along with many other buildings. In 1853, French archaeologist Auguste Mariette unearthed a statue of Khafre in the ruins of a building right next to the Sphinx, suggesting it may have been part of a plan for a larger compound. However, the answer is not that simple. There are many who think the Sphinx predates the works of Khafre, though, and may have been built by his father, or perhaps his half-brother. Of course, for those who think the Sphinx is much older, it's unlikely that either of these pharaohs were the ones who had it built. If it truly is as old as some think, then it could have been virtually any earlier pharaoh or leader of a previous civilization that ordered its construction. Strangely, there are no definitive records that attribute it to a particular reign, possibly because the writing has long since been worn off the side of the statue, so it's very hard to know for certain. Number 9. Is it complete? The Great Sphinx is 240 feet long from paw to tail, 66.3 feet tall and 62 feet wide, and was carved from a single mass of limestone. But is it actually complete? Discoveries found in the area around the structure imply that its builders left in a hurry and may have had much grander plans for it. Archaeologists have found large stone blocks, toolkits, and even packed lunches that were left in trenches around the Sphinx which leads them to suspect the workers abandoned the project before they had finished. Quite why this happened, or why people would leave their lunch behind, is a mystery. What was the ultimate plan for the Sphinx? There were barracks nearby that could house between 1,600 to 2,000 workers, and their diet indicates that they were not slaves. They may have worked in rotating shifts as they carved out the Sphinx and carried away quarried blocks to build a temple. Like I mentioned, it may have been part of a larger temple compound dedicated to the god Ra, since many parts of the Sphinx coincide with certain movements of the sun and the equinoxes. Number 8. The Sphinx Temples The Sphinx has two temples associated with it, one that's directly in front of it that has been traced back to the old kingdom of ancient Egypt, and one that's to the northeast of the structure that is linked with the new kingdom. The Old Kingdom Temple was built from the same limestone blocks as the Sphinx itself, which many people think suggests the entire complex, including the Valley of Khafre, was built at the same time. The orientation of the temples along with the Sphinx suggests that there was a spiritual link to the monument, but there are no records that explain exactly what this was. Some believe the Sphinx and the deity it represented became the focus of religious worship, which would explain why the second temple was built, but with no definitive proof having been found, its importance to everyday Egyptians remains unclear. A very interesting thing to note is that during the sunset in the March or September equinoxes, the shadow of the Sphinx and the shadow of the pyramid become merged silhouettes on the sand. Since these both represent the king, it seems that the Sphinx symbolized the pharaoh presenting offerings to the sun god in the court of the temple. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Number 7. Who does it depict? While the structure itself is commonly referred to as a sphinx, the face is thought to be a representation of an actual person, but their identity is not known for sure. Most Egyptologists think it's the face of Khafre, which would make the most sense. There are, though, no inscriptions to confirm this, nor is there any record of its construction, which seems strange considering the grandness of the structure. There are claims that other representations of Khafre look very different to the face of the Sphinx, and that it actually looks more like his older brother, while the way that the head is out of proportion with the body might suggest that the face was re-carved a number of times under different pharaohs. It could even have originally been of a ram or a hawk before being remade as a human, and the continual reshaping over the years would explain why the head is so much smaller than would otherwise be expected. Number 6. The Beard 
You may be surprised to hear that the Sphinx once had a beard. Due to erosion, it eventually had to be removed. The remains of this beard can be seen in the British Museum and the Museum of Antiquities in Cairo, but there are some that believe it wasn't an original feature of the statue. The reason this idea has gained so much traction is that when the beard was removed, very little damage was caused to the rest of the sculpture. If it had been sculpted at the same time as the rest of the Sphinx, remember it was all one limestone block, you'd expect to see far more damage to the chin than is apparent. Experts generally agree with this theory, with some suggesting that the beard had been added during Tutmos IV's reign. Before that, the Sphinx had been ignored for about 700 years, but for some reason Tutmos IV brought it back and introduced a Sphinx-worshipping cult to the New Kingdom. It is believed that the Sphinx spoke to him in a dream, and so he had it renovated and may have added the beard. Whether it was to reflect the culture of the time or an attempt to complete previously planned designs, we'll never know. It's just another little mystery that makes the Sphinx all the more compelling. Number 5. When was it built? Even though it seems as if the Sphinx was built at a similar time to the surrounding structures, there's still great debate about its origins. One of the strangest pieces of evidence that's raised questions is the way that the stone on the Sphinx has signs of erosion that appears to have been caused by water, as opposed to wind and sand. This is unique to the Sphinx and not seen on any other structures on the plateau. Although Egypt is a dry, arid desert today, it used to be a wet and rainy land about 10,000 years ago. In order to show the signs of erosion that it does, researchers have suggested that this would mean the Sphinx is somewhere between 7 and 10,000 years old, having been built far earlier than anything else in the region. The accepted date is that it is 4,500 years old, since there's little evidence of water erosion elsewhere on the plateau. So unless the Sphinx has experienced its own weather system, there's possibly another explanation for this erosion. Number 4. The Missing Nose When you look at the Sphinx, there's one feature that stands out the most. It's missing nose. There have been a number of theories about what happened, and you've probably heard the story that it was destroyed by a cannonball fired by one of Napoleon's soldiers. The problem is, there are a series of sketches of the Sphinx that were made before the time of Napoleon, and those too show the statue without a nose, so the popular legend is disproven. An Egyptian historian wrote in the 15th century that it was actually broken by a Sufi Muslim in 1378. At the time, Egyptian peasants would make offerings to the Great Sphinx in the hope that their worship would bring successful harvest by controlling the flood cycle. Outraged by the worship of an idol, he destroyed the nose and was apparently executed for this act of vandalism. Of course, the only evidence of this story comes from words written 300 years later, so it can't be proved for certain either. It's therefore unlikely that we'll ever know for sure what happened to the most famous missing nose in history. Number 3. It's not a Sphinx Even though we refer to the Great Sphinx of Giza as being a Sphinx, that's not entirely correct. It's actually only relatively recently it has been known by this name. It used to be called the Statue of the Very Great Kepri by ancient Egyptians, and later on the Horem Aket, which means the Horus of the Horizon. Medieval Egyptians called it various names including Balhib and Bilha, which leaves an important question. What exactly is it? In Greek mythology, a sphinx is a creature with the body of a lion, the head of a human, and the wings of a bird. The statue at Giza, of course, has a male face with a lion's body and no wings, so it doesn't quite fit the description. Perhaps the wings were included in the full designs for the monument that would have been built if it had been finished. Or perhaps the intent all along was for it to be something completely different. The intent of the Sphinx's symbolism is unclear. Archaeologists have also found residues of red, blue, and yellow pigment indicating that it used to be painted very bright colors, probably like a superhero. Number 2. Astronomical Purposes As with many ancient monuments, there are suspicions that the Great Sphinx was built for purposes beyond simply as a work of art, and there are many who think it actually has astronomical uses. One theory suggests that the Sphinx, along with the pyramids of the Giza necropolis, were all part of a power-harnessing machine that was designed to ingest energy from the sun. With temples dedicated to the sun god Ra nearby, it's quite possible that a grander plan was at work. A further theory suggests that the Sphinx, the pyramids, and the Nile all line up with the constellations of Leo, Orion, and the Milky Way. To further complicate things, if the buildings were a form of astronomical map, the best date for when the stars were in perfect alignment was about 10,500 years ago, which would mean the Sphinx and potentially the pyramids are far older than even the most ambitious estimates. Number 1. 
The Secret Passageways There have been for a long time stories and legends that there are secret passageways underneath and inside the Great Sphinx. Scans of the region have found anomalies that could be tunnels or natural phenomena, and in 1995, workers renovating a nearby parking garage found a network of tunnels that led further underground towards the direction of the Sphinx. Seismic scans in the early 90s were used to map the ground the Sphinx is built on, and the results showed a series of hollow, regularly spaced chambers a few feet below the ground between the statue's paws. Unfortunately, further investigations into these findings have been impossible because the focus on the renovation of the Sphinx is currently far more important. The preservation project has been taking place since the 50s, but attempted treatments have so far failed, which has left the left shoulder of the monument severely fragile. Digging in the supporting foundations could risk further damage, so research has had to be put on hold until it can be done in a safer way. There are clearly plenty more secrets for the Sphinx to reveal, and as technology improves, we may be able to learn more about it in a less invasive way. Thanks for watching and putting up with my voice. <laughs> Leave any riddles you want in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and come over and say hi on my new Instagram at Katrina Explained. See you soon. Bye!